this is Miss Alex from the Riverhead Free Library. Thank you for joining us for our very last installment of Yuki Storytime. Now enjoy the story, and I'll see you for the craft afterwards. The Nightmare Before Christmas, written and illustrated by Tim Burton. It was late one fall in Halloween land, and the air had quite a chill. Against the moon a skeleton sat, alone upon a hill. He was tall and thin with a bat bow tie. Jack Skeleton was his name. He was tired and bored in Halloween land. Everything was always the same. I'm sick of the scaring, the terror, the fright. I'm tired of being something that goes bump in the night. I'm bored with leering, my horrible glances, and my feet hurt from dancing those skeleton dances. I don't like graveyards, and I need something new. There must be more to life than just yelling boo. Then out from a grave, with a curl and a twist, came a whimpering, whining, spectral mist. It was a little ghost dog with a faint little bark, and a jack-o'-lantern nose that glowed in the dark. It was Jack's dog Zero, the best friend he had, but Jack hardly noticed, which made Zero sad. All that night and through the next day, Jack wandered and walked. He was filled with dismay. Then deep in the forest, just before night, Jack came upon an amazing sight. Not twenty feet from the spot where he stood were three massive doorways carved in wood. He stood before them, completely in awe, his gaze transfixed by one special door. Entranced and excited, with a slight sense of worry, Jack opened the door to a white, windy flurry. Jack didn't know it, but he'd fallen down in the middle of a place called Christmas Town. Immersed in the light, Jack was no longer haunted. He had finally found the feeling he wanted. And so that his friends wouldn't think him a liar, he took the present-filled stockings that hung by the fire. He took candy and toys that were stacked on the shelves and a picture of Santa with all of his elves. He took the lights and ornaments and the star from the tree, and from the Christmas Town sign, he took the big letter C. He picked up everything that sparkled or glowed. He even picked up a handful of snow. He grabbed it all, and without being seen, he took it all back to Halloween. Back in Halloween, a group of Jack's peers stared in amazement at his Christmas souvenirs. For this wondrous vision, none were prepared. Most were excited, though a few were quite scared. For the next few days, while it lightning and thundered, Jack sat alone and obsessively wondered, why is it they get to spread laughter and cheer while we stalk the graveyard, spreading panic and fear? Well, I could be Santa, and I could spread cheer. Why does he get to do it year after year? Outraged by injustice, Jack thought and he thought. Then he got an idea. Yes, yes, why not? In Christmas Town, Santa was making some toys. When through the din, he heard a soft noise. He answered the door, and to his surprise, he saw weird little creatures in strange disguise. They were altogether ugly and rather petite. As they opened their sacks, they yelled, Trick or treat! Then a confused Santa was shoved in a sack and taken to Halloween to see Mastermind Jack. In Halloween, everyone gathered once more, for they'd never seen a Santa before. As they cautiously gazed at this strange old man, Jack related to Santa his masterful plan. My dear Mr. Claus, I think it's a crime that you've got to be Santa all of the time, but now I will give presents and I will spread cheer. We're changing places, I'm Santa this year. It is I who will say Merry Christmas to you, so you may lay in my coffin, creak doors and yell boo. And please, Mr. Claus, don't think ill of my plan, for I'll do the best Santa job that I can. And though Jack and his friends thought they'd do a good job, their idea of Christmas was still quite macabre. They were packed up and ready on Christmas Eve day, when Jack hitched his reindeer to his sleek coffin sleigh. But on Christmas Eve, as they were about to begin, a Halloween fog slowly rolled in. Jack said, we can't leave, this fog's just too thick. 
There will be no Christmas, and I can't be St. Nick. Then a small glowing light pierced through the fog. Who could it be? It was Zero, Jack's dog. Jack said, Zero, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? And to be so needed was Zero's great dream, so he joyously flew to the head of the team. And as the skeletal sleigh started its ghostly flight, Jack cackled, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. "'Twas the nightmare before Christmas, and all through the house. Not a creature was peaceful, not even a mouse. The stockings all hung by the chimney with care. When open that morning would cause quite a scare. The children, all nestled so snug in their beds, would have nightmares of monsters and skeleton heads. The moon that hung over the new-fallen snow cast an eerie pall over the city below. And Santa Claus's laughter now sounded like groans, and the jingling bells like chattering bones, and what to their wandering eyes should appear but a coffin sleigh with skeleton deer, and a skeletal driver so ugly and sick, they knew in the moment this can't be St. Nick. From house to house with a true sense of joy, Jack happily issued each present and toy. From rooftop to rooftop he jumped and he skipped, leaving presents that seemed to be straight from a crypt. Unaware that the world was in panic and fear, Jack merrily spread his own brand of cheer. He visited the house of Susie and Dave. They got a Gumby and Pokey from the grave. Then on to the home of little Jane Neiman. She got a baby doll possessed by a demon. A monstrous train with tentacle tracks, a ghoulish puppet wielding an axe, a man-eating plant disguised as a wreath, and a vampire teddy bear with very sharp teeth. There were screams of terror, but Jack didn't hear it. He was much too involved with his own Christmas spirit. Jack finally looked down from his dark starry frights and saw the commotion, the noise, and the light. Why, they're celebrating. It looks like such fun. They're thanking me for the good job that I've done. But what he thought were fireworks meant as goodwill were bullets and missiles intended to kill. Then amidst the barrage of artillery fire, Jack urged Zero to go higher and higher. And away they all flew like the storm of a thistle until they were hit by a well-guided missile. And as they fell on the cemetery, way out of sight, was heard, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Jack pulled himself up on a large stone cross, and from there he reviewed his incredible loss. I thought I could be Santa. I had such belief. Jack was confused and filled with great grief. Not knowing where to turn, he looked towards the sky. Then he slumped on the grave and he started to cry. And as Zero and Jack laid crumpled on the ground, they suddenly heard a familiar sound. My dear Jack, said Santa, I implored your intent. I know wreaking such havoc was not what you meant. And so you are sad and feeling quite blue, but taking over Christmas was the wrong thing to do. I hope you realize Halloween's the right place for you. There's a lot more, Jack, that I'd like to say, but now I must hurry, for it's almost Christmas Day. Then he jumped in his sleigh, and with the wink of an eye, he said, Merry Christmas, and he bid them goodbye. Back home, Jack was sad, but then, like a dream, Santa brought Christmas to the land of Halloween. The End Today we are going to be making a Nightmare Before Christmas themed wreath. What you should have in your pack are a small white plate, a bunch of strips of paper, a small black cutout, and what else you'll be needing is a black sharpie, crayon, or marker, or a pen, and a pair of scissors. If you need an adult to help you with that, please get one right now. The first step to this project is cutting out this inner circle right here. It can be a little difficult. So if you need an adult to help you with cutting, please go get one right now. After you've cut out your circle, you're going to take some glue and put it on the full side. And then you're going to fold it over 
like so. You can start with whatever color you want, but I decided to start with white. Okay, it's gonna look something like that. You're going to repeat the same process with another color. You're going to want to try to overlap them as much as you can, like so. I'm gonna hold it up closer to the camera. Like that. It's a little messy at the bottom, don't worry, we're gonna be taking care of that later. You can do this again with the black strip. Until you've gone all the way around and meet back here. So when you're done gluing, it should look something like this. Now from here, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut a ribbon sort of effect down here. So you can see, cut there and on the other side, there. So when they're all done, it's going to look like that. After you finish with that, it's time to draw our Jack Skellington. I suggest taking a pencil first to sketch him out. So Jack, first you can start with a circle like that. And he has a pretty long, thin neck. So maybe something like that. He has two huge eyes. Two little bone nose slits, and of course, his trademark sketch. Now, I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to outline it in black, and then I'm going to color in his eyes. This is my Jack Skellington, and the next step I'm going to take is I'm going to cut out his head out of the paper plate. After your little Jack Skellington head is cut out, glue his head to the back of his coat collar. After you have this, feel free to decorate his collar in any way that you choose. If you have some white paint, you can just paint some lines across here. Or really, if you want to use any color that you want or decorate it however you can, feel free. And after the paint has dried, you're going to put some glue on the back of this and then glue it right on your wreath. And there you have it. This is your Nightmare Before Christmas wreath. Thank you for joining me for all of Geeky Storytime. I've had so much fun and I hope you have too. See you next time with something different. Have a good one and happy holidays, everybody.